All right, so that's, that's maybe some background information, nice to know, kind of in interesting stuff. Now when it comes to actually modeling uh, the, the energy part of this, uh, we need some more information. So let's talk about uh, black body emissive spectral power. We know that light has some uh, wavelength dependence as we've just seen. Uh, and we know, as I've said, that there's not like a single wavelength emitted by a given object. So what does the, the distribution of light that's emitted by any emitter actually look like? Like how does that, how does that play out? So first of all, what we're gonna write out is um, this black body emissive spect spectral power has a symbol that goes with it. It is E sub B uh, comma lambda. So what I'm saying here is this is uh, emissive power Emissive power, that's the E part. The B part is black body. I'll just put B, B for that. Lambda is spectral. Okay, so the units on this are, let's see, one squared uh, and per meter squared micron, mic micrometer. So watts per meter squared mu for mic uh, micron. Mu M. All right, uh, so if you're gonna somehow convert this back to a uh, dimensional power, you need to multiply by the wavelength, you need to multiply by area. All right, so this is, uh, this is sort of the quantity. Um, we're interested in how this looks or how these, the wavelength dependence looks. So let's draw what we call a black body curve. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick some temperature. Let's maybe start with uh, I don't know, uh, let's say, let's start with the temperature of the sun. So it turns out the temperature of the sun, T sun, is about 5,800 Kelvin. So let's plot out what the, uh, d the density or the intensity profile of this looks like. Um, so we're gonna start over here, so it starts here. It peaks at about uh, 0.7 right there. And then it goes down here, so let's get the features right. Okay, so the black body curve kind of looks like this. You might want to look at the book to get the actual non-squiggly version of that, but uh, that's more or less what it looks like. So you have a distribution, and note that this is a log scale, right? a power difference, this is like an intensity of radiation emitted at a given wavelength. So if we're looking at like the one micron range, one micron's intensity is about one, two, three, four, five, six orders of magnitude higher than so the, the edges of the distribution. So it's a really dramatic uh, change, but the point is that there's a distribution here, right? It's not just a single wavelength. So this is like the, this is like the sun here. So now it uh, turns out that if you're emitting and you're at a lower temperature than the sun or different temperature, you're, the spectrum changes, right? It makes sense that a colder thing is gonna emit less radiation. Um, so you could maybe pick a different temperature. We can maybe pick like 2000. Uh, let's maybe plot that out. So that might look something like this. Okay, so this might be uh, 2,000. Okay, uh, let's pick maybe 1,000 now. So maybe that looks like this. 500, or sorry, 1,000 would be next, 1,000. We did 500, and so on. Okay, so this one down here, um, let me draw it the other way. This one down here would be like about 300, okay, see so this one was 500, this is 1,000. So some interesting things to notice here. One is that uh, the amount of, of radiation emitted by lower temperature stuff is significantly less than higher temperature stuff. It turns out we emit less than the sun does, shocker. Uh, so this, you see the orders and orders of magnitude lower for us at 300K 
than for the sun up at uh, 5,000, uh, 5,800. The other thing to notice is that like the, the most uh, likely position for a wavelength uh, of emission changes. So while the sun's most likely position is less than one micron, our most likely position is around 10 microns. So there's a big difference in where the peak radiation occurs. So you get this shift of the distribution from low wavelength to high wavelength um, as you uh, cool off, basically. The other really interesting thing is this. So if I draw a line, uh, we'll just see how accurate my drawing was to begin with. So if I draw a line that connects the, the maximum points of each of these um, curves. OK, so I wasn't perfect. But we could go back and pretend that I was, right? So this, pretend that the maximum is here. So I'm drawing maximum here, 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 and here. On a log-log plot, it's a straight line. OK? So stop and think about that for a second. If I look at the most likely wavelength that's emitted as a function of absolute temperature and, and plot it out as a straight line, right? It's remarkable. Like the, the fact that that is what happens. It's just of all the things that could happen, uh, it just so happens that it, it follows this curve. And if you go look at real surfaces and how they emit, um, they tend to follow this curve, right? So this is um, something, there's a name for this. The person who discovered it, I suppose, uh, his name is Wien. Uh, so Wien's displacement, displacement law. Uh, and it basically states that if I take uh, lambda max, that's the, the wavelength at the maximum uh, probability, times the absolute temperature of that surface, it's equal to a constant. And that constant happens to be uh, 2,898 micron Kelvin. OK? So if you've ever wondered what temperature is, like if somebody ever says, can you define for me temperature? And you think, well, it's how hot something is. And they say, well, that's not really a definition. And, and they keep badgering about it. This is actually the definition of temperature, right? Temperature is. A, a measure of the energy state of a surface or of a body. And how do we know that it's uh, uh, sort of the energy state? Well, it's related to the most likely uh, frequency at which it's emitting light. So that's sort of an indication that you, you, if you drill down far enough and look at the atomic level, you could measure sort of the energy state and the likelihood that a photon's going to be emitted. It's going to correspond you know, with this kind of curve. So it's, it's kind of a, um, a cool observation that came out of this. This whole field of study actually is what led to the discovery of um, quantum mechanics, right? Einstein's theories all sort of fell out of this. So if you go far, uh, far enough back, it's um, some really interesting uh, history here. Is there any, any questions on this part of it? Yeah. Yes, so the question is, what are these curves showing? What it basically it's saying is, if I, it's hard to tip it, but this is black body spectral emissive power. So this is like the intensity of light that's emitted per unit meter squared for a given wavelength. So if I was at this, this temperature, my surface was at this temperature, uh, and I was looking at the likelihood or the intensity of light at a specific wavelength, like I'm, I'm a radio transmitter and I only take in a certain wavelength, right? I would read an intensity, let's say here, right? Now if I change my, my tuner on my radio antenna to a different frequency, it's gonna read an intensity up here, right? So it's looking at wavelength specific intensity for a given surface temperature. And now if I cool off my temperature a little bit and now look at the intensity curve, it's gonna follow some other cooler temperature profile. Okay, good question. Okay, um, so, so that's the black body emissive spectral power, just kind of understanding what it is. The curves that I've drawn here, um, while they're not very good drawings, there's actually a, a, 
uh, law that goes along with them. So a Wien's displacement law is that line that connects the, the maximum point at each curve. The curves themselves are described by Planck's law. So this is the famous physicist, Max Planck. Uh, and he, through a great degree, degree of trial and error and working with uh, some others in the field or basically competing with others, others in the field, came up with this law. So it says EB lambda is equal to some constant, C1, divided by lambda, my wavelength. Remember, this is um, wavelength-specific power. So there's, it's going to be a function of the wavelength you choose. So it happens to be lambda to the fifth uh, times exponential of another constant, C2, uh, divided by lambda times t, right? and then minus 1. Uh, the units again on this are watts per meter squared, uh, micron. And then the constants are as follows. So C1 is 3.742 times 10 to the eighth units watts per micron to the fourth meter squared. C2 is uh, 14388 micron Kelvin. Okay, so if you're ever doing like a regression uh, curve fitting, uh, this is like the ultimate curve fitting. So how the heck they ever decided that lambda to the fifth exponential C2 over lambda T should be the form of the equation, I don't know. But you can go maybe read some books about that. Uh, but they did, they did decide that and then they found the coefficients that go with it. So this is a, a law that sort of describes the intensity um, it's been proved to be, you know, really uh, very accurate for a black body, but again, there's nothing that's truly a black body. So um, one of the ways that they validate this is by looking at things that look like black bodies. Like I said, the cosmic background radiation is one example. Um, okay, so then where do we go with this? So we've got this relationship, this Planck's law, EB lambda, it's this nice function. So ideally, we'd like this to be related to the total radiation in some way. Uh, well, the total black body emissive power, uh, total black body emissive power uh, is, uh, we call EB. Right? So no, we've dropped the lambda. It's no longer a function of lambda, or it shouldn't be. It's got to be the integral from zero to infinity of EB lambda, D lambda. So we're going to integrate this entire thing, this uh, messy function up here. Planck's law, and what do we end up with? So I won't make you do the integral. I'm not going to attempt it myself, but it ends up being sigma t to the fourth. I bet you all saw that coming, right? So that whole integral integrates to that. Uh, great, so everything is uh, consistent. That's good. Um, what do we want? So let's say now we've got this, this model. We know that there's a relationship between these two things. One thing that we might want to do is, let's say that there's a real surface. It's OK, we've got a leaf, and it's green. And we know uh, we want to see how much radiation is actually being absorbed by that. We know there's a band or some bands where the light is not being absorbed. So we want to subtract the fraction of light in those bands. Well, we can do that, but we'd somehow have to like integrate this function, EB lambda, from like one uh, wavelength to another wavelength and then subtract that off. Well, it, it, as you might guess, like the integral, the actual process of integrating this function is kind of messy. Uh, it's not very easy to do. And so um, we need to sort of do the following. So let's take some emissive power function like this. Let's say we want to just look at how much light is in this region here. Right, so let's say it's some surface and it's not absorptive above that. So what do we do? We need to integrate. So that'd be EB from 0 to, we'll call this lambda 1. Let's call this here lambda 1. Right, so that would be the integral of 0 to lambda 1 of that whole function. So C1 lambda to the fifth exponential of C2 over lambda times t minus 1. Right, d lambda. 